Hi everyone, welcome to Bhakta to Pizza. In today's video, I'll be making a hard unleavened bread known as bati, which is very popular in northern India, particularly in the states of Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, and some parts of Gujarat. Bati is made using whole wheat flour and it is commonly served with dal, so it is also called as dal bati. Another popular delicacy that is served with dal bati is the churma. So, in today's video, I'll be making dal bati churma, all three recipes in one video. I'm very excited in sharing this recipe so without further delay let's get into the video. First I'm going to make the dal for which I'm going to use various types of dal in equal measures. 3 tablespoon of green gram, masoor dal or red lentils, channa dal and black yura dal. Rinse it thoroughly in running water and add it to a large bowl. Cover it with enough water and soak for a minimum of 30 minutes. The more time we tend to soak, it reduces the cooking time. While the dal is soaking, let's make the dough for the bati. To a wide bowl, I'm adding 2.5 cups of whole wheat flour, a teaspoon of salt, 2 teaspoon of crushed coriander seeds, 1.5 teaspoon of ajwain or carom seeds. Crush them between your palm to release the natural oils. 1 4th teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda and give it a quick mix. Pour in 2 to 2 and a half tablespoon of ghee and mix it with the flour thoroughly. Take some flour in your hand and hold it tightly within your palm. The flour should hold the shape like shown. Now start to sprinkle water and mix to form the dough. The dough shouldn't be too soft like we make for the chapati. So while adding water, Add just enough water to form the dough. Cover and rest the dough for 30 minutes. While the dough is resting, let's cook the dal. Transfer the soaked dal to a saucepan. Measure and pour in 2.5 cups of water and a teaspoon of turmeric to it. Stir, cover and cook in low to medium flame until the lentils are just cooked. It took me around 20 to 25 minutes. While the dal is cooking, check it now and then. The dough has now rested for 30 minutes. Knead it again for a minute. Now pinch the dough and shape it into balls. Place it between your palms, press it gently and flatten the dough into discs. Shape it like shown as though you were to stuff a filling. Now bring the edges of the dough together and close it. You'll notice that we've left the center hollow. This is for two reasons. One, it will allow the bhatis to cook evenly. And two, it will help the bhatis to be soft. I have shaped all the dough into balls, some big and some small. Big ones are for the oven and the small ones are for the ape pan. Now as the first method, we're going to cook the bhatis in the oven, for which grease a tray or dish with some ghee, place the dough in it, Bake it in a preheated oven for 20 minutes at 180 degrees Celsius. Now on to the second method. Heat the appe pan and pour in ghee into each of the molds. Place the dough into each of the molds. Cover and cook in low flame for 12 to 15 minutes. After 15 minutes or so, open the lid and flip the bhatis. Traditionally, bhatis are deep fried in ghee, but to make it a little healthier, we are just going to drizzle ghee over the bhatis in the ape pan. For the second time, we are now going to cover and cook the bhatis for 6 to 8 minutes, but this time in medium flame to get rich brown color and a hard crust. The bhatis in the oven is half done. Like we did before, we are going to flip them, drizzle with ghee and return to the oven to cook for another 20 minutes. After 8 minutes, bhatis will have browned on one side, flip them again. Drizzle ghee over each of the bhatis again and for the last time, cover and cook for a further 6 to 8 minutes. Check if the bhatis are done. You'll notice that both the sides now have a hard crust and rich brown color. It took roughly around 25 to 30 minutes to cook the bhatis. Now that the bhatis are cooked, let's remove them and set aside. I checked the oven and the oven baked bhatis are ready too. Now on to the dal. It is almost cooked. It is important that it is not too mushy, soft and yet holding its shape. Add a teaspoon of salt and give it a mix. To a hot pan, add a couple of tablespoons of ghee 
1 teaspoon of cumin seeds, 1 tablespoon of chopped garlic, 1 tablespoon of chopped ginger. Saute them in low flame for 1 to 2 minutes. Now add in one large onion that is finely diced along with two green chillies slit lengthwise. Give it a quick stir, then add a teaspoon of salt. Saute for a minute, then cover and cook for 2 to 3 minutes. After 3 minutes, open the lid. You should find the onions cooked soft. Now add in 1 teaspoon of turmeric powder, 1 teaspoon of chilli powder. Saute until the masalas are fully coated in the onion mixture. When the oil starts to ooze out, add 2 medium tomatoes diced. Mix it through. Cover and cook until the tomatoes turn mushy. It would only take a couple of minutes. If the tomatoes aren't cooked enough, mash it using the back of a wooden spatula. Now add 1 fourth teaspoon of asafoetida and mix well. Pour the cooked lentils to the onion and tomato masala and stir it through. Once the dal comes to a boil, add 1 fourth teaspoon of garam masala and mix thoroughly. Finally, add in a generous portion of chopped coriander leaves. Give it a mix. That's our dal ready to be served with the bhatis. The dal consistency I'm showing here is perfect to serve immediately. But if you decide to make it ahead and serve it later, dal will start to thicken. In which case, add some hot water and stir through just before serving. Now as the last element, let's make the churma. To a blender or food processor, add 4 to 5 cashews, 8 to 10 almonds, 2 teaspoon of sugar and 2 to 3 bhatis broken. Pulse the added ingredients for a couple of times to a coarse powder. That's our churma now ready. Traditionally, churma is roasted in ghee before serving. But because I have used a lot of ghee in this recipe, I have skipped that step. So in the platter, what you're seeing is all what we have cooked today. It's the oven baked bhatis and the ones we cooked in the apé pan with dal, churma and ghee. So the way to eat it is by breaking the bhatis and drenching them with lots of ghee and dal. Sliced onion, lemon wedges and slit green chilies are generally served but I missed to show it. So viewers, I hope you liked the making of dal bhati churma. Please try this recipe at home. Give us a thumbs up and share your thoughts and feedbacks in the comment section. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please take a moment to do so and hit the bell icon so that you'll be instantly notified on our upcoming posts. I'll see you soon in another video. Until then, stay safe, take care and happy cooking!